Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com weekly Bible study channel. I'm Jerry Lynn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The only reason that we have blessed hope, folks, in the midst of the confusion, the fear, all of the things going on throughout this world, when we abide in Jesus Christ, none of these things matter, folks, because we have the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God the Father who freely chose to shed his blood, die on the cross for our sins so we didn't have to go to hell. He arose from the grave on the third day. He conquered sin and death. We must use our free will to believe on him, to repent of our sins, and to commit our lives to serve him. Once that takes place, everything else going on in the world doesn't matter, folks. This life is temporary. Eternity is eternity. Amen. We're continuing this week in the book of 2 Corinthians. It's an epistle or letter that the Apostle Paul had written to the body of Christ residing in Corinth, an area in Greece, at that time considered a Roman province of Achaia. I hope you have a Bible. If you're in need of one, log on to https, jesusthegoodnews.com, request a free Bible, or borrow one, buy one. If there's one in your house, dust it off and open it up. Ask the Lord to give you understanding Folks, the Lord wants us to have knowledge of his word. It's our life manual, folks. The only book in this entire world that can benefit all of us for eternity. The only book in this entire world where every word is inspired by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. That's why it's always under attack. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. Amen. I hope you join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father God, for the blessing of another day, another day to draw closer to you, dear Lord, another day to get right with you, dear Lord, another day to share the precious news of Jesus Christ with others, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I pray that you bless this message and that you fill those who are listening to it with your encouragement, that they are inspired to draw closer to you, and those that are unsaved, that they are inspired to call on the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, to pick up your holy word, the holy Bible, and start reading it. Amen. Thank you, dear Lord, for your mercy, for your grace, for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness, for your patience. Most of all, dear Lord, for Jesus Christ, your precious and only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, folks. Praise Jesus. Again, 2 Corinthians, we are in chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Amen. So Paul is speaking to the body of Christ in Corinth regarding the body of Christ in Macedonia. Take notice of what they have endured and how they have come out being blessed because they trusted in the Lord is what he's saying to them. They have endured affliction and because they had faith in Almighty God, he blessed them, brought them from spiritual poverty to spiritual riches and also he blessed the ministry. 
He blessed the body of Christ in that particular area, as well as through spiritually, physically as well. Amen. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, of their own free will, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So they took up collection among them. They who are were poor, poverty. Again, not just spiritually, but physically. But as a true earmark of the body of Christ, they had love and compassion on the brethren to give to those who had needs. So they took up a collection and they blessed Paul and his fellow brethren that were in the authority positions to set up the churches and bless them as well in this way. Amen. If we go into the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 29. Okay, there, here. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. So that's another example. The brethren determined to send relief. That's the example of the true church, the body of Christ, working together in unity, having compassion on one another, being concerned with one another's needs. A beautiful illustration of how the Lord God loves us and looks after us. How Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, had compassion on everyone. Those who desired to draw close to him and believed on him. He had compassion. So we, the body of Christ, should have compassion as well as well as having the common goal to lift up Jesus Christ, to follow the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit that we are indwelt with once we are saved, to give all glory to the Father. Amen. Praise Jesus. Continuing here. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, one of the fellow brethren, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Indeed. We go into 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Comfort, encouragement through the body of Christ. This was the example of Titus when he spent time with them. Paul being in Macedonia, Titus being at that time in Corinth, he acknowledged to Paul the encouragement that the body of Christ was giving him as they received him as one of the brethren was joy. Amen. Praise Jesus. Continuing here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In so much that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Amen. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. 
I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Indeed, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God the Father, God made flesh. He didn't have to leave his throne to come down here, to be born humbly into this world as a babe in a manger. But he did, folks, because of his love for us. He grew to be a man, and he freely chose to die on the cross for us, to endure all of that suffering for us. He became sin who knew no sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Continuing here in verse 10. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. So Paul is speaking again of alms or giving to the poor, the brethren, and other areas of the body of Christ. Not giving of your abundance, but giving of what little you have out of love and compassion to help out your fellow brethren. Indeed. So if we go into the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 3, this was the account of when Jesus had his earthly ministry and he witnessed a poor widow that gave all that she had into the treasury. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. He witnessed those who had abundant wealth putting in the, to the treasury and the temple at that time their abundant wealth. But this poor widow, her motivation was love respect and faith in Almighty God and a desire to help. So what little she had, she gave it. So that's what Paul is speaking about here to the body of Christ in Corinth here in verse 12. It is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. Praise Jesus. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by inequality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. That's found in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 18. Just go into that right now. And this is when the Israelites were in the wilderness, the Lord God was supplying for them their needs with the manna. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. 
So there was no lack. Everyone was provided for because they followed the instruction of the Lord to gather just what you need for you and your household, not being greedy. And we're to carry that on today, folks. That's the example within the body of Christ. Amen. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, another one of the brethren, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. Amen. Now if we go into the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 43 through 47, this is a really good example of the first century body of Christ, the example of what it should be today. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. That is a beautiful example of what the true church, the body of Christ, should be. Now, of course, the scripture says in the temple because the body of Christ was just starting to grow at this time. This was shortly after Jesus Christ had risen from the dead on the third day and ascended back to the Father after he had appeared and spent time with his apostles and the disciples. And of course, the Old Testament adhering Jews were still worshiping in the temple, but when the body of Christ began to grow, they were also meeting in the temple. Of course, as things started to expand, a lot of house churches became popular as well, as they are today in other countries. And I believe there will come a time in the United States where house churches will become commonplace because the persecution of Christianity is going on. But there will come a time when it will become more prevalent in the United States as well. So the house churches, I believe, will be, uh, again, more commonplace so people can meet secretly without being persecuted. Continuing here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul was giving thanks to the brethren for Titus that he went, spent time with the body of Christ there in Corinth and encouraged them and brought encouragement to Paul as well with his uh, announcement of their faith and their love for Paul and the other brethren. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. Amen. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us. Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Strive to be holy, just as Jesus Christ is holy. Amen. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent 
upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Praise Jesus. I hope that this message has encouraged you and inspired you to get into a Bible study of your own, to study the Word, to show yourself approved, to get a Bible if you need one, to call on the name of the Lord before it's too late. Our time on this earth is short, folks. Realize that. And consider where you want to spend eternity. It's your free will choice. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also check out All Glory to Abba on YouTube. Check out HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com. And I pray that the Lord God continues to get your attention. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.